Okay, we're gonna use JavaScript to add another layer to a Cardo map. So I have this example map where I have some data. It's one layer of data from Cardo overlaid on a leaflet map using JavaScript and HTML. Here you can see the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript. I'm setting up my map, setting up the base layer, and then inside of the rest of the JavaScript file, I'm creating my Cardo account and loading one data source. In this case, these are dams globally. I'm styling those dams and I'm adding them to the map. So if you want to add another layer, you need to change, you need to add another source, another st style. You need to combine that into another layer. And then you need to add that layer to your um, to your page. <clears throat> so I'm going to walk through doing that right now. Um, the big thing to keep in mind is that um, we're going to need to create new data sources, new styles, and so on for every layer that we need um, to add to our map. And in so doing, we'll need to change the variable names because you can only have one variable named source, and you can only have one named style, and only one named layer. And it's tempting <clears throat> to, um, to make your variable names different by adding like a one or a two um, after the name of the variable. And I'm going to encourage you to be more specific when you're doing, when you're updating your variable names. Um, this is going to make it a lot easier down the road when you're, when you have more code to know which, um, which data source, for example, you're talking about. So the way I'm going to do that here is um, I'm actually going to change all of these variable names first. Um, and I'm going to say dams source. So I'm going to add dams, which is the name of my layer in Cardo. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as long as it makes sense to you. And every time I change one of these, because the variable name needs to match exactly, you'll see an error in glitch, source is not defined because there was a variable named source and we just renamed it. And the quick and easy way to um, to make sure that you update the other <coughs> variable names is copy that variable name exactly as it is, find all the other instances of source, and paste it. I'm going to do the same exact thing for style, dams, style. Note that I'm capitalizing style. <clears throat> You'll find this makes it easier to read when you can see that it's two words and where the new word starts. Doing the same thing, I'm copying and pasting dams, style. And then the last part that is specific to the dams is this layer. I'll do the same thing there. Dams, layer. Dams, layer. OK. Haven't changed much here. We've just renamed some variables. We're just setting the groundwork. Uh, so our map should still work. You should open that up. Um, Really, after every variable renaming, you should um, you should keep an eye on 
the result um, in a browser tab. Just because there are no errors here doesn't necessarily mean that um, that your map is working. I would definitely, every one of those changes that I made, I would keep an eye on the other tab to make sure that um, it's still working. Great. So I'm looking back at my Cardo account. I want another data set. Um, maybe I want the countries. Maybe I want to customize the countries somehow. So I'm going to add countries as another data set. <clears throat> and um, this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a shapefile of country boundaries. This is from natural earth data. Okay, so I'm going to make a new source, a new style, and a new layer, and then I'm going to add that to the map down here. So, <clears throat> What I will tend to do is I'll try to group the code in such a way that it um, is easy to read and it's easy to find all of the dams related things in one place and all of the countries related things in another place. So I'm going to make a little bit of room after the dams. And I'm going to do these one by one. I'm going to copy over the source. So now I have two things named dams source. Um, <clears throat> you see here that the this still works okay. Um, in general, you don't want two variables with the same name to be declared. Also, because we're going to change this to countries here in a minute, like this, we want to make sure that we update the name of the variable too. So we're just selecting all of the data from my countries layer. Let's see how that looks. Nothing's changed. That's OK, because all we did was select the data that we want. Next, we're going to style it. I'm going to copy and paste this. Countries. And countries. Um, these are polygons rather than markers. Uh, so you might want to, uh, you're definitely going to need to change the Cardo CSS. It's not going to, um, Cardo isn't going to style your data correctly if you're using marker styles for a polygons layer. So uh, off the top of my head, I know that marker fill, um, instead of that, we want polygon fill. And I'll just get rid of the other ones for now. And I'll make it a different color. Um, for now, let's start with white and see what happens. Great. So looking back again, I haven't added it to the map yet, but I'm making sure that I haven't introduced any new errors. Great. So I have a source. I have a style. I need to combine those into a layer. And I'm going to copy this. Same deal. Uh, I want to make sure that I get the exact right name for the country's source and the country's style. And then I want to update the name for this dams layer. Um, if you look back at our map now, we seem to have broken things. Um, and that would be because um, dams layer is now getting redefined as uh, the combination of country source and country style. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that it's, it's it's its own thing. So now uh, we still haven't added it to the map, but we're just making sure we haven't broken anything. And um, so the last step is uh, there are a couple of ways to do this, but we're going to add our layer. And I'll do it this way first, and then I'll show you another way. Great, so we're saying add the countries layer, 
then add the dams layer. And we'll see, there still seems to be an error. And there aren't any errors over here in Glitch. So there probably is something going on on the Cardo side. If there are no code errors, it's probably something happening with Cardo. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the developer tools. Let me make these a little bit a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to go to the console. So the things in the console, um, they're not always going to be useful for us. Um, and it's, it takes a little bit of time to get used to that. But um, what we're really interested in are the red things. These are the errors. And whenever you see a little triangle like this in developer tools, it means you can open it up. And we'll see um, the error message is something like permission denied. Analysis requires authentication with API key. Permission denied. So this probably means that there's a privacy setting that I haven't changed in Cardo. So I'm going to go back to Cardo and look at my country's data set. In this case, you'll see that it's set to private right now. I'm going to change it to public with link. That will make it public as long as you're referring directly to the data set. And uh, so it doesn't automatically update the page because we haven't actually changed any of the code. But if we refresh the page, hey, OK, great. So now you can see um, that we have, we have essentially overridden the styles of the countries. Um, by overlaying our own country sh shape file. Um, but maybe instead of doing the fill like this, maybe we want to do some other kind of styling, like playing around with borders or something like that. Um, and then we can go in and change um, change some settings in the Cardo CSS. If you're not um, remembering how to do that, feel free to come back to the Cardo CSS documentation. Um, there are polygon styles. These deal with the polygon fill. And there are line styles, which will deal with the outline. Uh, so I could look at the line color and the line width. make the line color something that we'll be able to see. Line width. Let's make it nice and noticeable first of all. Uh, you'll see it looks like our fill... No, nope, our fill is gone and we just have an outline. Um, this might be a little bit too strong. You can play around with that. That's not really the intention of what we're looking at right now. Um, but just, just to show you that um, you can, once you have it there, work on the Cardo CSS a bit. Um, so just to recap what we've done so far, we've copied the source, the style, the dams layer, and we gave each of these descriptive names that will make sense to us later on. And after we did that, we added it. Oh, and I forgot the semicolon there. Um, we added it to the map. There's a shortcut for the, when you're adding multiple layers. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it's called add layers. And when you do that, you add an array of layers. So we're listing the layers that we want to show on the map rather than adding each one individually. If you look at our map, still showing up fine, still looks good. Um, and the order here matters. Um, if I turned on the fill again, polygon fill, and I reordered these. So if I put the dams layer first, should see that we can no longer see our dams layer. 
because the dam's layer was drawn first. So I'm going to undo that, and it looks good now. Great. So last thing I'll mention, um, you can do this as many times as you need to for the, the other layers that you want on your map. Just make sure that you keep the names descriptive. I might also, because this can start to get pretty um, long and uh, like a lot to look at, I might add some comments and I might use a multi-line comment such as this one in JavaScript. It's a common way to break up multiple lines and everything within these slashes is a comment. So I can say create dams layer and I might do the same thing when I create the countries layer here. And that is one way, perhaps, um, when you have more than, in our case, we have about 64 lines of code, 63. Um, if you had a lot more code to look at, sometimes it's helpful to break it up in that way so that you can skim through the file and figure out what's going on.